something that probably changed my life forever was when I graduated college, I went backpacking through Europe with my roommate, my best friend, Lori Casey. And we, we had lived together in the dorms at school for years and never had an argument. We were, we were really good friends. And we decided to go backpacking through Europe when we graduated for um, about five or six weeks. And I had no money, she had no money. We bought a Ural pass and we had this incredible adventure going through Europe, uh, through Italy and France and Spain, Germany, Switzerland. Um, and it was, the, I, I think, a life-changing experience for me that I just could not, I had the travel bug and I could not wait to be able to go on another trip like that. And here I am with Bertram, meeting this person who, for a living, gets to go on these adventures and goes to Africa, goes to the tiniest of islands around the world, whether it be like Easter Island or like Papua New Guinea or places that um, the average person doesn't even think about going. If the average person is thinking about going on a trip, they're thinking, oh, I wanna go to, I wanna go to Paris, I wanna go to London, I wanna go to Italy. Um, but here was Bertram saying that he had been to India couldn't wait to go to India. He'd been to Egypt. One of my dreams had always been to go to see the pyramids. Like as a child growing up, um, I, my grandparents used to, they bought me a subscription in National Geographic. And I was living out all these fantasies of these fantastic pages in these books of, you know, like when King, when they had brought uh, King Tutankhamun, all the photographs of exhuming uh, him from, you know, the, the tombs. And these pictures, I just wanted to be there. I wanted to touch the ground. I wanted to see the pyramids. I wanted to see how big they were. I wanted to meet the people. I was just like fascinated with that. And I'm sitting with someone who has actually been there and been on the Nile or been to the Taj Mahal. And I just thought, I want to do what this person is doing. I love advertising and I love graphic design, but this person's life is fascinating. He's not in an office every day. So that's, I, I was slowly, you know, thinking, how can I bring these two worlds together? And when I met Bertram, he was finishing up doing COPS and he, um, he had another project that he had created with a friend named Peter Riva it called Wild Things. And it was a show about wildlife, but doing it in a way that is um, almost on the, verge of reality television, actually bringing the animal experts to talk about the animals and getting really up close and personal, personal with the animal experts and with the animals in a very um, energized way. You know, I think Wild Kingdom, we've all watched those. I grew up on watching those. And there, you know, the camera sits for hours and hours and you just wait for the cheetah to move. Like, you know, Bertram wanted to get in your face with it. He wanted to um, run with the animals. He wanted to show a lot of this, but really up close and do it in a way where they would put several segments of many animals in one hour. And the show is called Wild Things. And when I moved to uh, Los Angeles in March of 97, he had just sold that to Paramount and they had bought the series. And I said, I wanna work on this with you because when I moved to LA, I didn't have a job. And I thought I could go find a job easily in advertising all the big agencies, Ogilvy, Didi, Me Needham. And I, my plan was to do that, but I had a little downtime before I jumped right into that. And he was going on a scout trip to um, Alaska, and then he was gonna go on a trip to Kenya. And I was like, I am going on that trip with you, and I will be whatever, whatever you need me to do, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna be keeping track of everything. I'll be the coordinator if you need me to anything, whatever it is, I want to learn. I want to learn how this is done. So um, we went uh, first to Alaska and we filmed in Sitka, Alaska. Uh, and I remember just flying there with him, with the cameraman and the sound man. And he was the producer basically. And I was the other producer or whatever I was trying to do. And um, we got up there. I remember we got up at the crack of dawn. We were out on a boat. It was freezing cold. And we were there to film whales breaching out of the water. And I couldn't believe where I was. I couldn't believe that this was all happening. And I was, I was so eager to learn everything there was to, to, to producing. Um, 
And he, you know what, what was wonderful is he trusted me. We'd known each other for two and a half years at this point, and I mean, he knew that I could, I was capable of doing this, you know, which was great. I had my own business. I, I knew the basics of getting things done, um, which is part of being a producer, making things happen and getting things done within a budget. Um, so we, we were on this boat, the whales are coming up out of the water and it's a fantasy land for me. And I was in awe of this. And I thought, this is, this is what I need to be doing. This is what I want to do. I need to figure out how to make this happen. So we did that trip. Then we went to Kenya for, uh, Kenya and Tanzania for three weeks. Um, I remember going over there. I didn't know what to wear. I had to get shots. I had to take Malarone. We were having these crazy dreams because you have to, you know, get all these inoculations to travel so you don't catch anything, you know, or even, um, you know, malaria is big with the mosquitoes and you have to take these pills at the time. Actually, it was larium, I think, was the drug to take. And you would get like these horrible side effects and have like these crazy nightmares, almost hallucinating. But I remember flying um, in economy, in economy from Los Angeles to Amsterdam, Amsterdam to uh, Kenya to Nairobi, and I think it was 11 hours to Amsterdam, and then maybe another 11 or 10 hours down to Nairobi. And I was sitting between like these. I don't know, our seats weren't together for some reason, but I was sitting in a middle seat between these two guys, big guys with their elbows over here. And people were still, I think, allowed to smoke on the plane. So you're like trapped in this capsule for all these hours. I could not wait to get off the plane. But I, I remember when we landed uh, getting off the plane in Nairobi, I, knew, I felt like I was in a, on another planet in a different world. And it was something that I'd never experienced before. And I was so excited to be there. I just could not wait to get out there and see the animals and get in the safari vehicle and see the tented camps. And um, I think he also enjoyed seeing me so excited about it because he's, he always has a passion for going somewhere. And I think that's something that makes someone successful. You always have a passion about what, you're passionate about what you do. And he truly loves what he does. And I truly love what I do. And we were just diving in, meeting all these fantastic people who work with the animals, work in the parks. And um, I just remember the first time being in the safari vehicle with the open top and standing out and seeing the giraffe coming by and the rhinoceros and uh, elephants and zebra and hearing the sound that the animals make that I'd never heard before, the sound that a zebra makes or the sound that a lion makes. Uh, for the first time, I was, I was like, this is it for me. I'm doing this for the rest of my life.